So now we've got the user interview, we've got that information. Like, so the interviewee has the notes, or their partner does. We use a technique called group story share. So what we do is we will have different teams go out and do the interviews, and then we'll all come back. And when we try, we do this group st story share, which I hope to demonstrate to you a little bit later on. And this method, the first thing it does is catches up uh, the team very fast. So I said, we don't want to have 50 people interviewing one person. It's a little intimidating. So we have some limits on that. We have one person doing the questions. We have one person writing it down. That means there's only going to be three people in the room maximum. Unfortunately, what that means is like your team is usually more than two people. <laughs> How do you kind of do this? Is I would say send the entire teams in different pairs out to other people. Great. Are you going to interview that same person multiple team times? Probably not. That would probably stress that person out, right? Being asked the same questions again and again and again. So what we can do is one mechanism of group share. It gets everybody up to speed as quick as possible. Sure, I could write a Gartner report on and get every 50 pages and get everybody to read it, but we all know what the odds of that that's happening. Another thing, what it does is it forces, this, it forces the speaker to process the observations. So much like often teaching a subject, you might probably say this, to, often teaching a subject makes you better at the subject just by the very nature that you have to consume the information and repeat it to other people, right? So that is one of the reasons we do it. it we do it verbally in, pro in, in, in person because, not because we want to embarrass those people who don't, aren't extroverted, it's, it's that process makes that, refines that information. It more infinitely distributes input. So generally speaking, we, we, we do a process where we go around and we'll try to involve everybody. Like I said, one of the key aspects of design thinking was that group, that highly variable group with all kinds of different values that people bring in. This helps, this tool is one of the tools that helps us equally distribute the input so that we make sure not only is everybody represented, but they're, I don't want to say equally represented, but the idea is that make sure that they have a voice. Because what's the use of having them come in the group and not participate? Fourth one, trigger collaborative and additional questions. So one of the things here what we're looking at is that we believe, strongly believe in design thinking. It's the group that is the power. You are more than the sum of your parts. So build on the idea of others. We'll talk one that brainstorming roles, but this really does happen. Like the idea is something you sit as one person, you only have so many ideas, you have two people. It's not twice the output, right? Extreme programming would say that, you know, that, that the two people is not, you know, two people programming together is not tw twice as fast. Hopefully it'll be more than twice as fast, right? Quickly remove duplicates. Um, this is just more of the paperwork that we kind of do. And then uh, that when we do this, we, do, we quickly see patterns. And design thinking works out for me very well because I'm a very visual type of person. I like lots of different colors and stuff like that. And you'll kind of see that here too, is that it visually represents things that so you can see patterns which would otherwise have to be analyzed through other mechanisms that are not so easily interpreted by pretty well everybody can see the pattern here. One of the other tools that we're looking at here is the empathy map. Um, once again, this is from the, directly from the bootleg, but other people have this as well. But there are, I don't know if it's entirely clear here, but basically what you can do is you can put up sticky notes on the wall, but you can group them into these four type of sections. The idea is like these on the left hand, these two, these two quadrants are about observe. So these are things that are very easy, they're very factual. They either did not do them, right? On the right-hand side, these are inferred type of things. You can choose to split this up to, you can say, these things are inferred so that you split them out so you know that there's some volatility to them. You're, you're doing your best to see what that person was thinking, but they didn't tell you. You're not, you, there's no magic brain scanner, right, available yet, right? So, so these are I say I do, these are I think I feel. And then we split them up because there's, there's value to knowing which quadrant they fall into. We're going to do this a little later on, so I'll put the slide up later on, but the idea is like we have some brainstorming rules that are going to work for empathy, but we use them through all kinds of processes we have at SAP and, and, and within the design, frame, uh, design thinking framework. So not just design thinking, we do a lot of estimating, all of the essay. We think this is pretty cool. Sticky notes kind of thing. These rules help us to govern the system and make it work really efficiently. Okay, so if you've had any issues with brainstorming before, not working out very well for you, hopefully you'll have a different uh, view of it once we kind of go through that. So the first one is like one conversation at a time. Okay, this is one of our key rules. Sometimes we have a bell or something that somebody can kind of trigger people on. Two, go for quantity. At this point, we're not doing a lot of curating. We want as many as ideas as possible. Uh, three, headline. What headline means is that 
write your sticky note or write your idea in a way that sort of sells. It's like that's what newspapers have a headline for because they have a limited amount of space and they want to sell as many newspapers as possible. So the idea when we say headline, okay? Fourth, build on the ideas of others. Remember we are talking about that group thing? Y you should see this. If we've done our job properly, you're going to go see this when we do it in real life. Five, encourage wild ideas. It's a little graphic and it's talking about how like basically there's the easy ideas and the wild ideas and the great ones are sort of in the middle. You'd be surprised if you only look and do the reasonable ideas, there's a whole bunch of ideas that you're going to kind of miss up there. So that wild idea might itself might not be, but add that one to like the build on the idea of others and stuff like that. They kind of cool. They kind of radical. Six, be visual. This is me. I've shot a lot of these photographs, even the background and the original PowerPoint. Those are all my photos and stuff like that. I'm very visual. Uh, I, I need high contrast color and stuff like that. Patterns. Uh, it works well for me. Seven, stay on topic and eight and defer judgment. So sometimes you may have like a facilitator. It's almost like a scrum master within scrum that is part of the brainstorming. And by using these rules, we can keep positive momentum going on in the brainstorming.